All right, so here are five underrated effects in After Effects. And what is my criteria for this? Well, these are effects that kind of fly under the radar a bit. Maybe you don't know about them. Maybe you're not using them. I didn't know about them for a long time. Wasn't using them to their full potential. Uh, so, all right, let's check them out. All right, so first up is Corner Pin. So this is really good for putting stuff on screens. And so, you know, before I knew about corner pin, a lot of times I would make a layer 3D and I would try to like rotate it in 3D space to fit on the screen. And you know, that's really kind of hard to do to try to line it up like that. So that's not what we're gonna do. I'm gonna undo this, make this not 3D. And here's what we do. We, we look up corner pin, all right, and apply this. And you get these little handles here. And then all you do is you just kind of stretch this into place onto your screen like this all right and i just have like some fractal noise as the screen content so don't worry about what's going on on this screen and boom now we have like a really nice uh screen contents okay easy easy enough okay so next up we got change to color so you ever film a beautiful shot like this and then your client is like you idiot didn't you read the notes? The peppers were supposed to be blue. And I'm like, oh man, all right, no problem. We'll fix it in post. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this uh, piece of footage here and I'm gonna search for change to color. All right, so now on this piece of footage up here, let me go ahead and just make a little mask around these peppers right here. Something like this, great. And now what I'll do is I will with this change to color, I will grab my little eyedropper on the red here, and I will change this hue to blue, something like this, or we could go purple. Well, that's kind of cool. Kind of like the purple, actually. I don't care what the client says. Let's do purple. I like that more. All right. And then you can uh, adjust the settings here. I mean, you have all kinds of these settings here that can do different stuff, hue, set, lightness, and saturation. In this case, we just want the hue, all right? And you can toggle this stuff. You can see if we crank up the hue, it's gonna like spill out onto the wooden board here. So we don't want that. And maybe we'll crank up the softness a little bit so it's not so much of this hard edge. And look at that. Now we have um, purple peppers instead of red. And that's exactly what we want. Great. Now, if you want to make a kind of trippy animation, and I don't know why you wouldn't, um, a lot of times what you want to do is you'll want to add like a saturation effect like this, and you'll want to cycle through it, right? Something like this. But the problem is you can't animate this, right? There's no um, checkbox or whatever it's called, a keyframeable thing here. So you can you can't animate this. So what you can do is you can add a color balance. Color balance HLS. Boom. Now with this effect, you can cycle through the hue. So I can add keyframes onto this, like this. And now I can add a little keyframeable animation. And we can do a some kind of hue ramp effect. You can add uh, expressions onto these and do all kinds of really cool um, animations with this. CC Composite. So basically what CC Composite does is it takes a copy of the original layer and puts it on top of itself. Sounds really boring, but let's see what it can do. It's kind of cool. So um, if you just apply it to right here, you're not going to see anything. But what I'll do is I'll add something else, like let's say a transform, right? So if I add a transform and I drag this above the CC composite, so it happens first. And let's say I scale this up, all right? Maybe give a little rotate here. And let me change this blending mode for the original composite layer to be like copy or something. Uncheck RGB only. And actually, let me change this so it's like in front, all right? So now we have two um, of the original layer. And we can like rotate this one or something. And I can also do something now like maybe I'll add a fill, all right? To, and drag this above it, okay? So now we have um, all of these things that are happening before the composite, right? And we can do some really interesting stuff to this, okay? And the cool thing is, is that we can keep 
um, stacking this kind of stuff however you want. So we could maybe now add a blur, like a fast box blur and blur um, both of these and then add another composite after. So you could do something like blurring um, the text that's behind this composite and then composite it back on again. Um, so the results can get really crazy. This is really good for making like text presets that you could save because this is all happening on one layer. Camera lens blur. All right. So there's a lot of different kinds of blurs and they're all great for specific reasons. Okay. But camera lens blur is really cool. Okay. So on the left side here, I'm going to apply a fast box blur. Okay. Let's crank this up to like 10 pixels and great. This is great. We have some blurry stars here. Fast box blur has got me through a lot of troubles, but I'm going to show you why camera lens blur is really cool. Okay. So let me add a camera lens blur here. Let's put this at like 20 pixels. All right. So right off the bat, you might not be able to see much of a difference if any but but here's what we're gonna do so the camera lens blur it like mimics a real camera with like the aperture and the lens and letting light in and all that kind of stuff so we have um shape properties so right now it's it's blurring um in the shape of a hexagon so if you see right here the fast box blur um, it's just kind of blurring the shape very circular and here it's doing hexagonal So if I can change this to maybe a square shape and now these are like they're rotated So they're like diamonds and we could rotate these to be more um, Squarular if that's what you're into um, We could do triangle too. That's kind of cool um, Actually, I don't like that. We're going back to square all right, um, and there's all this other kind of stuff uh, here we could do, like change the diffraction fringe. I don't know what that means, but whatever. Um, and then all this other stuff like under highlight, never really worry about this either. The really cool thing about camera lens blur is we have blur maps, okay? And what this allows us to do is, so I have this gradient ramp here, right? And we can now map our blur to the gradient. So what this means is if I was to select this gradient ramp layer with my blur and then choose the source being effects and masks because the gradient is an effect, now our, our blur is um, being affected by that. So where it's the black values are, we have less blur and where it's white, we have more blur. And we can just, we could change that if we want here, but right now it's being affected by the luminance. Um, and we can you know, mess with these settings to change how that is going to affect. So right now it's kind of cycling through that and we could of course invert it um, like this, but by um, with this kind of blur map, we can do some really interesting things and you could like import um, 3D blur maps from other programs to really kind of make a convincing depth of field. Um, so uh, camera lens blur is a really awesome blur. Love it. All right, so these were my picks for top five most underrated effects in After Effects. Let me know what you think of this list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have your own list? What do you think are the most underrated effects? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.